If looks could kill, he wouldn't need a chainsaw. Today's video, though, we're going to be checking out the new Scream Factor release of Texas Chainsaw Massacre, The Next Generation, The Collector's Edition. It's currently available. It's available right now. So if you guys want to order it from, say, Amazon, or if you can find this in retail stores, this will be sitting on shelves right now. Um, this is one of my, and pardon me for saying this, because I know I'm going to have to redeem my horror genre fan card to all you other horror fans out there. I'm going to redeem my card right now by saying Texas Chainsaw Massacre The Next Generation is actually one of my favorite chainsaw films. Often at times I will be putting this one into the DVD player because that was how I originally had it. And I will watch it before I watch the second one. Or even, dare I say, the first one. I hang my head down <laughs> low. <laughs> Many people will consider Texas Chainsaw Massacre The Next Generation to be easily easily the worst of the sequels and yet i find such enjoyment such devilish enjoyment from popping this into my dvd player now let me just backtrack a little bit texas chainsaw massacre was initially released on vhs and it wasn't this cover this is obviously the brand new beautifully colored beautifully drawn artwork exclusive to scream factory we'll talk a little bit about that in a second Prior to that, though, Texas Chainsaw Massacre was released, I believe, in low distribution to some theaters and then was either pulled or just sort of fell into obscurity for the longest time. Success of both actors Renee Zellweger and Matthew McConaughey caused the movie to get circulation again on VHS, which is how I initially bought it. For the longest time, I was hoping it would get a DVD release, and it did, but it was one of those films that if you try scouring the internet prior to the release of this one, it was an extremely expensive and hard to come by. Many people were actually even selling Texas Chainsaw Massacre in the Next Generation bootlegs, and I, at one point, I think I might have even gotten a bootleg just because I wanted it on DVD, eventually getting a copy. And I had to go, uh, I think I had to actually buy it from a seller. I want to say, was it in Mexico? I, I don't really remember, but I did eventually get myself a DVD copy of it. I played it once. It, the transfer on the original DVD wasn't the greatest. It was pretty bad. Um, luckily, that not be the case here with the next generation here, the Scream Factor release. So, fast forward ahead in time. We've got ourselves the new Scream Factory release with, like I said, this beautiful artwork sleeve case. The same artwork is going to be on the inside inserts of the case. We'll look at that in a second. I really love the fact that they've got the drag uh, leather face here on the front wielding his chainsaw. The tagline, if looks could kill, he wouldn't need a chainsaw down below. I didn't realize this right away, but if you look at the forested area, you could probably make out there's Leatherface's face. I didn't quite right away recognize that there's a girl standing right there little nice nod. I'm looking amongst the rest of the forested trees to see if there's any other images I can make out. I don't see anything else other than the two images right there. Of course, you've got the cannibal's house down below and a police car and a really fantastic colored sleeve. With the other releases, though, the other Scream Factory releases, the inside of the case, depending on how you want to display it, will either have the brand new artwork. Let me just pull that out once again. I've already taken the liberty of switching this around. There's the new artwork. Here is what the original poster artwork and the VHS cover uh, also sported. I think the VHS and the DVD had various different uh, covers. There was one other cover where the chainsaw was like a lipstick, and you could see it just kind of sticking up, and it had the same tagline. And the Blu-ray, the DVD cover that I got, which I think actually was the bootleg, had the uh, lipstick on the one side, and it had this image of drag Leatherface on the other side. I liked this image so much, actually, funny enough story, that I picked up iron transfers from Staples, I think it was Staples Business Depot, and I printed this off and ironed it onto a white t-shirt, which I wore for the longest of times, even making this into a mouse pad. So clearly there was something that I quite liked about this original artwork, the original poster artwork, that compelled me to put it as on as many different mediums as I possibly could above and beyond just simply having it as the VHS cover. So with like other Scream Factory releases, I'll usually put the original artwork on the inside 
because after all, then, if once I take the case out, I'm reminded of what the original artwork looked like while enjoying the splendid artwork that Scream Factory has put on the outside. Now, like I said, Texas Chainsaw Massacre of the Next Generation, usually, often, frequently, revered by many as the worst of the Chainsaw films, I actually, again, quite enjoy it. It introduced me to Matthew McConaughey, which both prior to that, I had not even known of the actor. Um, it was certainly one of his uh, earliest roles. Uh, I believe he played a character, Vilmer Slaughter, which by itself really just has a unique name to it. In fact, actually, why don't we look at the back here? So before we kind of get to the special features, the very short read-up says, when a helpful family invites two lost couples in for a good old down-home massacre, the prom night teens find themselves all dressed up with no place to escape. Featuring fast-paced fun, standout stars, and a horrific helping of the franchise's own brand of gore, the fourth Texas Chainsaw Massacre film takes a comedic turn, even more pronounced than the previous films combined. I would disagree to that statement, personally, uh, because of Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2. I would say is a little bit more comedic than this one right here. This one certainly plays over the top, but I don't know if I would say it's the more hilarity ensued uh, comedic of the sequels. I feel as if the second one sort of still plays to more comedy than this one right here. The feature of the movie itself, adding a little bit to the summary that's been added to the back of the slip sleeve here, it's a bunch of teens, two couples in fact, that leave prom early and go venturing out, because you know that's always a good idea, venturing out into the, the forested areas of Texas before stumbling onto the Slaughter family. And like I said, Hilary ensues. Um, it's a different cast of characters, never really playing into the original uh, Sawyers or the original uh, Slaughter family. Uh, the uh, None of the same characters seem to play. It's sort of more a soft reboot. I know that's kind of the term that we use nowadays with films that sort of still is a sequel, but it's not really quite a sequel. It's not really quite a sequel because it's different family members, but it's sort of still the continuation that, yeah, if left on their own, this could theoretically be a sequel to the other ones, even though it is really branching off dram dramatically, character-wise, to what we've seen with the other previous characters. Um, like I said, the film is fun. It's a bit over the top. Matthew McConaughey certainly should have gotten an award for his over-the-top acting in that film. Renee Zeg Zellweger, you know, as well, an up-and-coming an actress who, of course, would branch off and do much more things uh, beyond the scope of horror. Um, both are featured in this film, and probably one of the reasonings why this film sat as long as it did before it was kind of re-released was because of the uh, the newfound fame of both the actors, Matthew McConaughey and Renee Zellweger. The features, and then we'll talk a little bit about the movie, the features, the buzz it back, an interview with director and of photography, uh, Levy Isaacs, marked for death, an interview with actor Tyler Cohn, If Looks Could Kill, an interview with special effects creator Jim J.M. Logan, behind-the-scenes footage, still gallery, theatrical trailer, includes two versions of the film, the theatrical cut HD and the director's cut in standard definition, which is about the only thing I would say is a bit the disappointment when it comes to this release. Understanding that Scream Factory only had certain footage that they could make, get access to, obviously the director's cut will be a little bit cruder, but it's sort of kind of like Silent Night, Deadly Night. If you ever watch Silent Night, Deadly Night, the director's uncut version, you can sort of hand pick out the areas in which would have been pulled from the original negative. You could kind of see right away, picture quality isn't as good on those extended gorier scenes as they are with the original. Here on the other hand, you're getting two versions. So if you really want to watch the theatrical cut, you're not really going to be seeing those abrupt cuts of lesser degraded footage. Whereas if you watch the director's cut, it's basically like watching it on VHS. Whereas the thea theatrical cut gets the high definition that one would expect from a Scream Factory release. Like I said, this is an over-the-top film. It's not something that most people going into a Texas Chainsaw Massacre series, you'll probably get for the first through, the first two through, and think, okay. Then you get to the third one, which of course is under New Line, and it has a drastically different rebooted feel. But it has a more polished feel. Then when you get to Texas Chainsaw Massacre of the Next Generation, it definitely feels a little bit more 
Lower budget is about the best word I can describe to it. What it does lack in, in that polished feel, it more than makes up for it, I think, with, like I said, the over-the-top acting of Matthew McConaughey. I also quite like Leatherface in this movie. I like his preferred look. I like the look design that they gave him. And when he gets finally into this drag outfit, I think as over the top as it may look, I love the fact of watching a dress running Leatherface chasing after Renee Zell Zellweger as she's running down the streets, or running down the dirt gravel roadways. It's a fun over the top film. And it sort of also kind of reminds me of something that I would expect to see from say Clive Barker. It incorporates some aspects as to why exactly this family does what it does. It brings in characters, businessmen, a businessman character for example, that loves enjoying uh, savageness, even to the point where you can see that he's gruesomely scarred himself. Um, watching that, again, I feel like I was watching a Clive Barker film, but it's not a Clive Barker film. It's still fun, it's action-packed, and it's fun-paced. Uh, often at times you'll just see Renee Zellweger just running, running down into the forest, running back into the house, running up onto the roof, and Leatherface just kind of wielding his chainsaw running after him. There's a lot of waving the chainsaw, jiggling by Leatherface throughout the course of this movie. So unfortunately, if you kind of, if you're not a big fan of the over-the-top leather face, you'll get a lot of that happening in this one. This leather face feels very much like a carryover from leather face from uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre Part Two, where he's got a, kind of got that jiggling thing happening where he waves the chainsaw above him. You get a lot of that happening in this one that wasn't really in the third one, the in-between leather face, the third sequel. Uh, like I said, it's a very fun, action-packed film. It's one of my personal favorites. I feel I would often frequently watch this one before I would watch the first or the second one. And from a gore level, it's not as gory, I would say. I know some people, would, if they have seen the director's version of this, there are some scenes which are more violent than I would say gruesome. I would often even feel like maybe even the second one has a little bit more of the gore factor to it than this one right here. Um, don't overlook it. Despite what critics may say about Texas Chainsaw Massacre, The Next Generation, I would say don't overlook the film, dismissing it as a lesser sequel. While it doesn't have it necessarily in the budget, the overacting performance of, of both Renee Zellweger and certainly Matthew McConaughey and the over-the-top nature of a drag Leatherface chasing after you, I think is enough that you should entertain the idea of putting this into your Blu-ray player and giving it a look. Today, we were having a look at the Texas Chainsaw Massacre of the Next Generation, and again, I apologize to anybody that would have said, I'm sure the comments down below are going to be astronomically bad. So many people are going to be saying, claiming, how could you take this film over the first and second? I just find it's more fun. And, you know, the, while the, the original Texas Chain, Chainsaw Massacre, of course, is a classic, I would say... Due to the nature of the tension that's throughout that movie, it's really something that leaves you a little bit more of an exhausted state than you were when you first started watching it. Texas Chainsaw Massacre The Next Generation, I usually will walk away and I'll think to the same, my same thing to myself that I say every time I watch that film, wow, what just happened? But then it was like, wow, what just happened? I had a really good time watching that film. <laughs> like I said, guys, if you guys are interested in picking this one up for yourself, you should be able now to find it in retail stores and online places like Amazon.com and .ca. Today, we were looking at the new released Scream Factory, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, The Next Generation. If you guys want to go back and have a look at some of my other Blu-ray reviews, there's a whole playlist just for you. We're going to have a look at some other great gift giving ideas underneath the tree as we lead our way up to the Christmas season. Well, we're technically about one week away from Christmas, give or take a few days here and there. Um, so there is still time, although the malls will be ridiculous. I would rather deal with a cannibal family myself than I would have to deal with going through the malls and having to shop now with the congestedness that is the customers all in stores. Personally, I would deal with Leatherface before I would deal with that. But we will still have a look at some great goodies that you can pick up this holiday season in some upcoming videos. So make sure you hit that little subscribe button down below. And as always guys, thanks for watching as you always do. I'll see you next time.